and they followed Satan, and they came, and now they're princes, they're angels, they're princes of nations. And they are going about seeing how much trouble they can get, how much trouble. We're always getting into trouble. There's rarely any peace. Somebody's always disturbing the peace. Somebody's always causing us to sense, uh, sense no peace. For 20-some days now, the two escapee, one is dead. They have given no peace to anybody. A thousand police officers trying to find one man hid in some place, and he is disturbing. But the man that they're chasing is a man of disobedience. And he's caused one day that will never occur. It is that God does. It isn't that God doesn't want peace. God is not at war with man, not even with the fallen angels, but they are at war with God. And as long as they will, there will be no peace. What if everybody? What if everybody believed God's word? What if everybody did exactly what God said for them to do? You know why there's no peace in your home? Nobody wants to agree with you. Right, Ron? Amen. <laughs> the reason there's no peace, nobody wants to agree with you. The reason they don't want to agree with you because they think they're right and you're wrong. Until they become parents. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> they're going to suffer the same thing you do. I understand that. <laughs> now we come to the seventh step in the ladder that ascends to divine blessedness do you want to be happy doesn't everybody want to be happy happiness is a result of peace I've, I've, I've come to peace with myself I've come to peace with myself, with my situation, with my home, with my life, and I've come to peace with my wife. I don't argue with her anymore. But she should be. It seems that God has called us to a very special calling to restore and to experience something lost in the fall. When Adam and Eve sinned, we lost peace. There's no, there's no more peace in the world. We are called then to be peacemakers. We are to restore this world to a place that is fortified by our sinfulness. So a special group of people God has called out from the world to be peacemakers. What if every person in the world were like the people in Noah's day? Every single person in Noah's day were not peacemakers. They were peace disturbers and peacemakers in the opposite direction. And so God said, I'm going to call out from this humanity, a group of people to become Christians. Why is it necessary to have Christians in the world? Can you imagine if everybody in the world was like Charles Manson? What if everybody in the world was like those two guys that escaped from prison? What if every person in the world was like people you know? What if you did not know at least one person who you really loved and was salt and light in your life? What if the whole world was full of people that you see on TV all the time? God says, I'm going to have a group of people who is going to be a person who's going to be the agent to be peacemakers. And they are his agents in the world. And they are here, go far beyond anyone who wins the Nobel Peace Prize. Because a peace that is offered is eternal and 
forever. Jesus has promised to bless people who are His agents for peace and even to call them sons of God. I'd rather be called the sons of God than call some here a son of the devil. You're acting like the devil. I want to be called the sons of God. A peacemaker unknown to anyone in this world. Not referring to politicians, nor statements, nor kings, nor presidents, our noble winners, our organizations as leagues of nations and the United Nations and the Council of Churches. They try to bring peace, but they haven't been able to accomplish peace. Nor the Reagans, nor the Kissingers, nor the Clintons, nor anybody like that are God's peacemakers. God's peacemakers are vastly different than the peace people that they would bring peace. The United Nations have not brought peace. There'll never be peace in Japan. I mean, in India, there'll never be peace in Africa. There'll never be peace in Iraq and Iran. They'll never be able to bring peace. We held peacemaking events. The peace we held today began to collapse tomorrow. We don't have peace politicians. We don't have peace politically. We don't have peace economically or socially or domestic. We don't have peace in countries. We don't have peace in nations. We don't have peace in political groups, organizations, and we don't have peace in homes. We don't have peace any place because we don't have peace in our hearts. That's the real issue. There will never be peace. There will never be peace in our hearts and in our homes unless there's peace in our hearts. That's a real issue. Someone said Washington has a lot of peace monuments. They built one after each war. No one has succeeded to bring peace. How many peace treaties have been broken? How many peace treaties have been broken? All of them. All of them. Peace that is glorious belief is a brief moment in history when everybody stood and stopped to reload. The world has concern in the aftermath of World War II with developing an agent for world peace. So in 1945, the UN brought itself into existence with a motto, here it is, to have success, succeeding generations free from the scour of war. Has there ever been a day that's not a war? Is there a country that's not at war? President Obama said 30 people every day are shot and killed in America. 30 homicides every day in America, someone has been shot and killed. No peace. They're at war. We're at war. You can't go in certain places. There's just a war zone. There's no peace. There is no peace. We have no ability to get around or along with us. We, you can, we can't get along with anybody. There's no peace with families. There's no peace with countries. There's, there's no peace in any place, not even jails. The New Testament Times reported, the New York Times reported, that since Christ there have been 14,553 wars. This country has never had one day where there was no killing. There's never been one single country, no single place that somebody is not at war with somebody. Since 1948, there have been 
164 international breakouts. Since 1958, 82 nations have been in conflict. President Nixon said, peace, a generation of peace. He said in his theme in 1970, we shall have a generation of peace, something we have never had before in this nation, not had one day since that. Webster is not on, Webster, not the one on TV, said generation was 33 years. Nixon said we would have a generation of peace. In 1815 to 1846, some say we had peace. That's because they didn't count the Indian Wars. Those periods were bathed in the blood of Indians. Never known a generation of peace. Listen to this. We have killed more people in America with private guns than all the wars we have ever fought. We have killed more people in America with private guns than all the world, all the wars, all together. There is no peace. We have no ability to get along with each other. Every relationship is fragile. People with mental and emotional illnesses as they never before. Family breakups, disorders in schools, there seems to be no end to any of it. And I preached this sermon over and over again, and you think somehow it would change. Man has no peace in himself, so his world, which he merely has projection of himself, is rid of chaos. He's not at peace with himself, and so he's going to give hell to everybody else he knows. He's not going to be, he's going to cause as much havoc as he can because he's not at peace with himself. Therefore, he gives no peace. If ever there needed to be a peacemaker, it's now. And I said that 30 years ago. And I'll say it again 30 years from now. Not a world peacemaker, but one God speaks here is in this church. So we need to understand five truths about peace. And you realize I never get through all five. I'm sorry. So we need to understand five truths about peace to understand what Christ is talking about. Number one, the meaning of peace. That would help, wouldn't it? What does the Bible mean by peace? What do we mean by peace? By God's definition. What is the divine perspective of peace? Because we've realized all the peace treaties that's ever been made by man has failed. Not one single peace treaty that we've made with Iran, Iraq, Vietnam, Germany, Russia, all those peace treaties have all been broken. At any moment we could break out in war. Some think peace is the absence of conflict or strife. Well, there is no conflict or strife in a cemetery. That's a good thought, too. There is no strife in a cemetery. Not a good moral of peace, model of peace. There's not a good model of peace. It's a far more than the absence of something. It is the present of something. Well, if I could just have all I want, then I could be at peace. Give you what I want, and I won't have any conflict with you. It is the presence of righteousness. It is not an absence of something. It is a present of righteousness. It is not that you... It, it means to have righteousness rather than not having anything. It is the present... More than the action of conflict that causes right relationship. Peace is not just stopping wars. 
Peace is creating righteousness that bring enemies together in love. When the Jews say, no other Jew shadows, he doesn't say, may you have no wars. He means, may you have all the righteousness. When he says shalom, sorry. When he says shalom, he said, may you have righteousness, the goodness God gives you. 